Hey guys, Blade Angel here, and in my video about 5 controversial supercars that aren't super, a lot of you guys made some really good points about why some of those cars did deserve to be considered supercars, or just in general how the definition of supercars has changed a lot recently. And this inspired me to do some research on the topic and find out why the modern definition of supercar has changed so much, and how that has affected the car community in regards to how we classify and discuss these cars. And the thing with the evolving definition is not everyone wants to accept it, including me. So when you think of a traditional supercar definition, you think of a rare, luxurious, fast, and expensive and beautiful car. If a car was considered a supercar back then, it meant that it was like nothing else on the road in any way, shape, or form. It wasn't anything close to a sports car, it was way beyond that, and it combined every outlandish element into what you would consider a supercar. And with this definition of supercar, cars like the Corvette and Nissan GTR couldn't be considered supercars since they aren't outlandish enough in style, rarity, and other factors. However, this exotic factor is quickly becoming a category of its own as the modern definition of supercar kind of separates them. The more modern supercar definition is simply a car that is extremely fast and just in general making a lot of sacrifices in the name of performance. So we're talking about cars that are doing everything possible to become lightweight and nimble and be fast on tracks and in straight lines. So when you look at cars like the Corvette, how it's only a two-seater, massive engine in the front, you know, you could still daily drive one, but I would argue that it's from a performance standpoint, sure, it does meet the supercar definition of extremeness. In that sense, yeah, cars like the Corvette and GTR would indeed qualify as supercars in this case. And a lot of people were telling me last video that modern supercars don't need to be rare or exclusive or even luxurious. And that's just what makes a car exotic. So something like a Lamborghini Aventador, that would be an exotic supercar. But something like a Corvette Z06 could still be a regular supercar. And I personally, part of me is still opposed to this. I know Chevrolet themselves advertises the Z06 as a supercar. I know a lot of people recognize the Z06 as a supercar. I don't recognize the Corvette as a supercar until we talk about the ZR1 trim, because the ZR1, in my opinion, that is a whole new level of extreme. It's very rare for a Corvette. It also has extreme, extreme design. It's nothing like the other Corvettes with the way the hood opens, complete cutout, and that also carbon fiber hook. It has a lot of carbon fiber, actually. You get the point. The ZR1 is extreme enough, and it's exotic enough, too, but a lot of people say that's not relevant anymore as to what we look for in a supercar that they don't necessarily need to be luxurious or have an extreme price tag. And the traditional definition of supercar is now kind of what's being used to apply to hypercars. So now when I think of what a hypercar is, now you're thinking million dollar, extremely rare, extremely exotic cars. And a lot of this is kind of confusing in the sense that, so what has happened here? Did the old definition, like did everything just shift a bit kind of? Because like I said, when you look at a McLaren F1, a lot of people back then, and a lot of video games back then, classified it as a supercar. When you look at a lot of modern video games and so on, and as well as modern car culture, we look back at the McLaren F1 as a retro hypercar. So the McLaren F1 didn't get any faster over these years because it's been out of production. So the fact that its terminology changed from supercar to hypercar, it actually moved up a tier despite the fact the car itself has not moved anywhere, because most of them are probably in garages sitting, but what I meant by that is it's not being advanced anymore because it's a discontinued model. That simply means that the, our, the old definition of supercar has probably transitioned to now being what we refer to as hypercars. And a lot of articles that I read also came to this conclusion. They're like, you know what? We are kind of watering down the word supercar and we had to invent the word hypercar in order to kind of reinstate that kind of significance or importance of certain models of cars. And then some people argue whether or not that even should matter, whether or not the word hypercar just shouldn't exist and we should just call them all supercars still. And personally, my opinion is, yeah, I'm fine with the word hypercar existing. Is it a marketing term? I don't care what it is. I think it just sounds cool. So hence, that's the main reason I'm okay with it. Now, as for the supercar term becoming watered down, partially yes and no. I think it's not just a matter of the term becoming watered down. I think it's also the amount of supercars becoming watered up. And of course, that's not an actual term of phrase. But what I mean by that is there are a lot more supercars nowadays or cars that would meet the supercar standards. When you think of 20, 30, 40 years ago, not many companies were ballsy enough to make supercars. And even when you look at early Ferrari and Lamborghini like 50, 60 years ago, I wouldn't even call their cars supercars back then. Those are probably most, they were even sold as just, you know, high-end sports cars. 
the term supercar is kind of a more modern phrase somewhat and then again and again but then technology caught up to it to the point that now we have so many and that's why we invented the term hypercar to kind of reinstate that level of importance because we're just obsessed with that kind of status and that kind of ranking and i understand it so what i mean is like when you look at modern day car culture think about how many supercar manufacturers there are and like undeniable supercars so whereas the gtr and corvette are still kind of on the fences you can't argue with me that the mclaren 570s is not a supercar because it is but then think about the company mclaren and think about ferrari think about lamborghini like that's three supercar companies i can name right there but then think about companies like audi and their audi r8 and so on and so forth you got the, the audi r8 v10 plus that's a supercar i don't argue with, me with that either and when you have a company like that, like I wouldn't call an Audi, I wouldn't call them a supercar company. You know, they do make regular cars. Absolutely. You can go out and buy an Audi. The fact that they're willing to do that kind of shows that like there are a lot of companies nowadays dipping their toes into the water for supercars. So maybe it's not so much that the term got watered down. It's that there are just so many freaking cars that qualify as supercars that there's an abundance of it. And that does call something into question, which is that kind of back to what the syndrome quote from the incredibles which is when everyone is super no one is so the whole point of being super is to be unique and if there are way too many of something that's considered super then really are they super anymore they're kind of that's becomes a new standard of normal in that case if everything is above average that's the new average but in due time when you have all these companies that just keep shooting up left and right there's like a new supercar company every day now it feels like there's like a new supercar being announced like every week when you have this many supercars, where are we going to go? Well, we, well, well eventually what's going to happen is there's going to be more hypercars. In fact, you kind of see that already happening with the cars like the Apollo IE and so on. So we have whole new companies that were used to be supercar companies turning into hypercar companies. So what I'm saying is that what awaits us beyond hypercars? When hypercars become oversaturated, will we create another category? Just like how we did with, when supercars became oversaturated, we created hypercars as another category? Or we reconsider the pre-existing structure? Maybe we'll decide that the word supercars shouldn't be thrown easily enough for the same manner that we shouldn't throw the word hypercars easily enough in order to kind of keep the current existing thing. And I don't know how that structure is going to go. I don't know if we're going to keep it or constantly changing because you know what? I can't see into the future. And ultimately, it's not up to me. It's up to you guys and us as a collective car community to decide what the definition of these words are and where we're headed in their progression. Just some food for thought for these videos. That's why I really like and enjoy making them. Just kind of keep a discussion going. Leave your thoughts down in the comments below. Other than that, though, thank you guys for watching and see y'all next time. Blade Angel out.